Hey guys, my name is Jessie Mew, and welcome back to Finch's Flight. In the last episode, Finch and Starling worked together to remodel the Feather Colony. Thanks to our brand new Highland style, we now have a new adorable den for our leader. This blends in so much better with our scenery, of course. It was made just for the Highlands. Even Galen's Grove is coming along nicely. He has a little patch of blue flowers by his door, so I'm sure he appreciates that magic touch. This lavender seems a fitting gift for a ruler. Oh, excellent, Galen. You must have heard our plans. I have something a little bit different in mind today, and it does, of course, involve the mountain colony as it so often does. Finch needs to see if he can sneak his way in there to gather a little intel of his own. Leo is known for prying secrets from our cats, so maybe it's time that we turn his methods on him. But to do that, we're going to have to make sure that he doesn't recognize Finch. Hey, if you ever bump into a foreign cat that's looking for someone, yeah, we've heard this before. And ironically, Griffin is telling this to us today, as we're about to mask our own identity. Maybe he would even have a few pointers, since he is kind of running away from his past life. But I think the cat we're going to want to go to first is definitely Starling. He just dyed his fur, after all. A brand new and very striking color. So maybe he could do the same for us, so Leo won't recognize us when we stumble into his borders. It's important to always keep learning, even after you think you've learned everything there is to know about something. Well, hopefully your skills with the fur dyes are better than ever, because your brother could really use your help right about now. I think we'll go ahead and change Finch's appearance now, before he even goes out to his battles. We'll definitely want to take off that scarf, because that would be a telltale sign that he's related to Pennycat, with such a noteworthy accessory. So we don't have too many skins to work with yet, but we want to choose something that wouldn't draw too much attention, like the Guardian skin. If they saw a bright blue cat, or even a green cat, wandering in from the forest, I think they would probably be a little bit suspicious. We have the Bengal skin, which is super pretty, but I think we might actually choose the black tabby. It's just different enough from his typical looks that I don't think he'll suspect us. Oh, but do you think we should maybe leave Ruby here too? Do you think Starling would mind just watching after Ruby while we're gone? Oh, it's so lonely. Now Finch is all alone on his journeys. He won't have his friend to give him moral support. But I suppose Ruby would only be in danger if Leo did discover our schemes. Now my plan is to get to know their cats a little bit more. And I know that Robin loves the butterflies, so it's a good thing that we have so many rare ones here. Hello my liege, I have discovered a lavender. A lavender from you too? Alright, I guess all of our cats are quite eager for us to get started on this mission. So let's go straight over to the battle that we set up with Claudius before, the one that's right on their borders. So we'll be super close to their heartlands, and none of their guards will suspect that Finch is around. They'll probably be a little bit wary, I suppose, a little bit surprised that Finch hasn't come out to fight his own battles. Since we did uh, send our cats out to that tile, that's probably what they're expecting today. They might even assume that we're going to send our strongest too. I'm sure we're going to need them, but thankfully we have most of our skills at the ready. So let's see how this goes. We use our deep cuts ability, our lion's roar, and then try to pick off the cats while they're still very startled. We just have a couple more to go, I think, and we have tons of our cards still alive. Rosemary is the only one left. Oh, excellent. We managed to win that one. With all that lavender in our pockets too, we might even be able to take over most of this tile. We've definitely caused them to lose control in the Highland Northwest. So someday soon we might be able to claim this entirely. Then we'll have most of the Highlands under our control. So I guess that means it's time for us to take all of these lovely butterflies and go into the mountain domain. We'll have to roll around in the grass first, try to wipe the scent of the highlands off of our fur. Least Leo get a whiff of the feather colony as soon as we arrive. We even have a couple of juicy rabbits that we could potentially spare as a gift. 
We'll just have to cross our fingers that their guards aren't going to notice us out here. As long as we can get through the Sentinel Woods unscathed, then I think we'll be golden. Oh, Leo's out here? Oh my gosh, he must be surveying the damage done to his borders. Well, this might be the perfect opportunity for us to introduce ourselves. Oh my gosh, and I just noticed that this skin is very, very similar to Leo's. We almost look like we could be related. Hmm? You aren't a mounted domain cat. What do you want? Don't cause any trouble around here. I'll know of it immediately and send Jack and Arthur after you. So he knows that we're not part of his colony and he is rightfully suspicious. But at least he hasn't caught on that we're a uh, finch yet. The mystic colony way up here? Well, I guess this will be a good way for us to prove ourselves too. If we manage to protect Leo. Let's just uh, munch on one of the bunnies first. And then I think we'll be ready to go back in for the attack. Hey, don't run away from us now, Willow. My goodness, charging in and then getting all scared. She knew she made a mistake. Well, Leo, I hope that has proven to you that we are very trustworthy indeed. And I'm sure he'd be willing to let us into his camp now. So now we can talk to everybody in his colony without him eavesdropping over our shoulders because we know that he's so far away. Now, if I remember correctly, Luna actually enjoyed some of the butterflies too. So let's go ahead and get on the good side of their healer first. I feel like that would be a pretty good strategy. If their own healer likes us, then we shouldn't have to worry about getting too banged up by their guards. Because maybe Luna would be willing to sneak out and patch up our wounds if we're ever too far away from our own colony. Now, Arthur. I am quite curious if you know a certain other bunny-loving individual. Let's see if he still likes the bunnies too. Oh, Finch, thy present is most appreciated. We'll just pretend that he doesn't know his name. Now, I know we don't know him too well yet, but let's see if he's willing to part with any information on Claudius. It is plain to see that thou hast some strength of paw. Perhaps one day soon we shall meet in the field of battle. Oh, I don't doubt it one bit, Arthur. But with our new persona, we'd be more likely to fight on your side, right? Just like we did for Leo. Now let's offer up some of our rare butterflies for Robin. Whoops, I didn't mean to throw it right at your feet, Robin. We actually want to give this to you as a sweet little gift. We'll go ahead and fill her pockets with all of these colorful little bugs because I feel like she's another good one to impress early on. Robin seems like the sort of cat who would switch sides in an instant if she had the opportunity. She never really striked me as somebody who enjoyed Leo's ways. If you're polite around here, folks will be polite back to you. All right, Delta, well, let's see if we can impress you with one of our gifts. We do have some extra mice in here, so let's try that first. Oh, he really loves the mice. Thank you, Finch. Yeah, we have to come up with a good decoy name to use. Something that nobody will suspect. I can't wait to use this in my next prank. Delta, what on earth are you going to use a mouse for? Do you think maybe one of the cats is afraid of mice? That would be a very interesting sight. Phew, it's getting hot out. Do you feel it, Finch? Well, it is the middle of summer, but thankfully you have this lovely waterfall to keep you all nice and cool. And we just have Jack over in the corner, which is, yet again, another one of the most important cats for us to get to know. Huh? What's the big idea? If you bring gifts for the Mountain Domain, show them to me and I'll inspect them. You know, he probably doesn't know that we uh, saved his leader from the wrath of the Mystic Colony. What do you want? Don't try to distract me from my duties. Sorry, Jag. We'll come back with uh, some good gifts for you soon. I'm not really sure what he would enjoy the most. Maybe herbs to keep him strong. Maybe food so he doesn't have to go hunting out on his own. And speaking of which, I wonder if we can find some little berries out here. Well, if we don't have too many mountain cats to fight. Shelly was uh, kind of stuck in the water. Did you see that? I guess she hasn't upgraded her swimming abilities either. Maybe we'll want to take a peek at ours so we can get around this land a bit more easily. We'll go ahead and upgrade our skill to level five so we won't get swept away by these currents. Then we'll be able to escape too, just in case the battles get a little bit too rough. But the mountains would probably be a great place for Finch to go scouting out for berries. 
And since we are in the summertime now, this is going to be his last chance to scoop up any raspberries. So I know he's going to want to fill his den before he can't anymore. It's getting awfully late tonight though, so we might leave that for the morning. We'll just try to scoop up some of these little squirrels so we have something to munch on. Oh, we have the licorice root from before. Even better. We know that Finch also quite enjoys his licorice roots. I'm sure that we have a nice stack inside our den, so we can save the squirrels as a gift and pick up our licorice roots in the morning. Oh, and the catnip. Oh, we are definitely going to steal that from the mountain too. That'll be great for us to sell off for the muse. That way we can increase our uh, new cat fund as well. I believe we need 300 muse to invite a new cat to our colony, so every little bit is going to help. We'll probably run out of inventory space if we're not careful, though. I can't resist hunting down all of those beautiful fireflies. Especially now that we've learned that Griffin really likes the red ones. I'm always keeping my eye out for more of those. He actually gave us a cardinal the other day, so I think it's safe to say that red is his favorite color. But let's go ahead and curl up to sleep. Unfortunately, without Ruby tonight... I'm still so sad that we don't have our little pet friend fluttering behind us, but we know it was for the best. Everybody knows that Finch has a ladybug by now, so it would have just been a big red flag. But with a belly full of licorice roots, we can stumble back outside and see if Coco might be willing to take some of these wares off of our paws. Starling has enough on his plate right now anyway. So we're up to 131 Mews. And I'm sure after a couple nother battles, we'll be halfway to our next cat. And what a surprise, the mountain domain is back in the highlands. So I guess we know where Finch is going to be heading off today. We'll just stop by and see if anybody has some extra gifts for us. You are no doubt wondering why I came to your calling in the first place, aren't you? Something tells me you're still not willing to let us in on that secret. Just kind of teasing us but maybe someday he'll trust us enough with his past. And Griffin, you will be quite proud to know that yesterday was a success. Finch, you're a good friend. I appreciate you coming by. Don't tell anyone I said that. They might get ideas. Well, you don't want anyone else stumbling up to your door thinking they can become friends too. Like Starling over here, your neighbor. Though I still think you'd be better off chatting it up with our friends. You're a curious cat, Finch. You're like a mix between an entrepreneur and an adventurer. I guess that means you've got some interesting stories to tell, huh? Oh, you have no idea, Starling. Wait until we tell you about the mountains. I don't think anyone will believe us if we tell them how the Mystic Colony tried to attack a Leo all the way up in their furthest borders. But we don't want to worry you too much, Claudius. Finch was able to take care of himself. There is always a careful balance that must be struck between accessibility and security. Well, Claudius, we are going to leave the security to you today as we go out to adventure around the mountains a little bit more. We've already found some very interesting trinkets to take back, like the catnip. So maybe if we're lucky, we'll find some more today. But let's take care of our battles again. The sky is still as this mysterious black cat who looks uh, strangely like their very own leader. Yeah, I wonder if Finch would try to convince him that he's some sort of distant relative. Maybe that would put uh, Leo's mind a little bit more at ease. But this time, his guards are a bit stronger. Now we still have two more to get rid of on our own, and I'm pretty sure Ellen might be a brand new reinforcement. Casper already took a couple of hits. There we go, he only needed one more, in fact but Ellen is stronger, so she's not going down without a big fight. So did we take over the entire territory now? Yes, this is all under our control. All right, I guess the only other thing we have left to do is scoot on down to the next tile and maybe spread around some of that extra lavender that we have in our pockets. Here we are so, so close to just taking over the Highlands. Finch is going to make his mother really proud following right in her footsteps and doing just what she aspired to when she found that beautiful highland lake up in the corner. I suppose we could catch some more of these emperor butterflies to give to Robin too. Let's go ahead and spread our lavender. 
We are so close to claiming this tile as well. Now let's stray away from their main camp today so Leo doesn't get too suspicious. And we'll just keep our eyes open for any little secrets that they might be carrying. Oh, the lavender. Yes, the lavender is so plentiful up in the mountains. This is right by the Blossom Lake, actually. And I know there are some other good herbs by the waterside. So let's grab those up too. But the treasures are not unguarded. Wiggles is not so convinced by our disguise. It's just one cat though, so I'm pretty sure we can take him. You know, I think this might be where we had uh, one of our battles with Starling when he was very, very little. When Penny took him up into the mountains to search for flowers and whatnot, I do remember him getting into a couple of major scraps. Though he had proven himself at that point to be a very capable warrior, so I'll bet he would have some good tips for us as we continue our adventures. There's our licorice roots. Good thing too, because Finch was starting to get a little bit hungry. I wonder if he has enough skill points to upgrade another skill again? We have the swimming ability, but I think we're going to use this on one of our active abilities this time. We need to be on our toes anyway, so we'll have to make sure that our abilities are ready to use. Oh, is that another one of those logs we can crack open? I'm pretty sure it is. I think I see that uh, telltale power paw symbol. So we're at the river bend right now, still inside the mountain territory, and very, very close to their borders. Well, don't mind if I do. I guess they were hiding some pretty big secrets in here after all. Oh no, we're running out of pocket space. Okay, Finch. I guess you're going to have to leave that one behind. Unless maybe we munch on a little bit of the Valerian, because we could use the speed boost anyway. That way we can get to the edge of their territory faster before we have to head back for the night. All in all though, I would call this little mission a major success. And only more so if we can manage to catch one of these frogs. We're kind of uh, low on our frog supply. Oh no! Oh no, it got away. Oh Finch, I think it might have something to do with your disguise. Maybe that's kind of shaking you off of your game. Well, here we go. You can try this one. It's in the water and the dove is trying desperately to let him know that he's under attack. Oh jeez. I think we could probably catch up to the frog because they are a little bit slow. Oh no, but the mountain colony of all time, Squire. We're trying to go frog hunting, can't you see that? I don't want to lead him straight to our frog because that'll only startle the poor little guy. But we have to get rid of him first. There we go. This is a very, very troublesome frog. I hope Griffin is going to appreciate this one. Excellent. And of course, we don't have any room in our inventory. So go ahead and munch on some supper, scoop up that frog, and then warp directly back home. It is high time that Finch got a little bit of rest. And time for him to take off this fur dye too. I think our little leader is ready to become Finch again. We'll go ahead and pop on that lovely red scarf and bring Ruby back to our side. I hope you had a good couple of days with Starling, little one, and I'm sure you missed us just as much as we missed you. But in the next episode, we'll have to put all of that lavender to good use and take over the Highlands once and for all. But for now, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye, guys!